get everybody's attention for a quick second. We have our local game warden, Will, here. And, and Will's going to talk a little bit about ice safety and some other things pertaining to ice fishing. So if anyone would like to hear that, we're going to give a couple minutes for everybody to kind of gather over here. And we're going we're gonna to put Will on the spot. He's a great guy, but he's also prepared to talk to everybody. And, and after he's done, oh, wait one second. After he's done talking, he'll be open to take questions too on whether it be game laws, fishing laws, or anything pertaining to the outdoors. He's really well versed on the lakes around here and most of the lakes in Maine, and feel free to come talk to him. He's no different than you or I. Yep, so you're on the spot, buddy. Thanks for thanks for being here first off. I'll give him a round of applause and, and for everything that you do for to help us, you know, be safe and, and the conservation part of it. And so there's fish for people of this age and people of this age. I saw a four week old right over there. So there's fish for people of her age when she gets to be my age. So we really appreciate that. And and the floor is yours. The the ice floor is yours. Come on over guys. I don't have the loudest voice, so you'll have to bear with me to get tired or spat. I'll put him right on the spot. <laughs> I'm no expert by any means. I don't know it all or anything like that. But I threw out a little outline this morning um, just on some stuff that I've learned in uh, the career I have as a game warden and some of the experience I got from hunting and fishing growing up as a kid um, doing all this stuff like you guys are so I just threw some stuff down just to kind of cover um, some important things I've learned you can always go on our website the, the internet's great that's how you came here is you found out about this most likely through the internet and you can learn a lot through YouTube and all these other uh, websites and channels. On the IF&W website, there's an actual link on there that talks about ice safety tips. So you can go right on there and, and see most of the stuff I'm talking about. Great resource on there. Also, with ice fishing, um, the department has transitioned for the most part from paper law books to online. And the, this new generation is all digital it seems like so they have tried to save paper they, they printed millions of law books and we find that a lot of them just get thrown well, every year they get thrown out because they're no good for the next year so they've tried to change things around and make it so you want the laws you can get rid of the computer and download it to your phone whether it's a samsung or iphone so we're trying to encourage that and if you download them um, while you're in phone service, when you go up north with a limited phone service, they still work and are available. And they have a great search engine tool on there where you can just type a word specifically and it will bring up anywhere in the law book that speaks about that word. Um, so it's really helpful so you don't have to keep scanning through and so on and so forth. There's also the main angling fishing tool that you can download to your phone as well. I, I don't have a lot of knowledge about that, but it's a pretty pretty neat tool where you can, it's like a Google map type program and you can go around to the body of water you want to fish, click on it and it'll tell you what the regulations are for it. So real improvement and handy. Um, and a lot of people don't even realize or just don't think, but we're a phone call away. I answer the phone all the time for questions or nuisance, nuisance wildlife, so on and so forth. So what's the hurt to call and ask a question? And our main dispatch is uh, through basically uh, the state police dispatch out of Augusta. If you're located in the Bangor area, then there's the uh, dispatch center in Bangor, Ashland, and Gray which combined with Augusta. So you can get a hold of us 24-7. I'd rather not have a call at 2 in the morning, you know, <laughs> unless it's someone poaching. But feel free to call and just ask and try to do the best we can, I feel like, to get you the answers. Because some of it is pretty complicated um, to a degree but let me get my little outline just so I don't go all over the place winter safety is huge there's no doubt about it you can you can have a nice day like this and all of a sudden a cloud comes over and it's the worst day in the world because now you've gone through the ice and you're in the water panicking trying to get out that's how serious it can get it can take your life what I've learned and, and what I recommend is Oh, back on the website thing online, when it comes to self-rescue, when you fall through the ice, there's several good videos on YouTube you can just look up for yourself on how to self-rescue yourself. 
and just watching one of those videos could save your life mm. each circumstance is different that's for sure with with the temperatures with whether it's nighttime or daylight if you're impaired or if you're sober you know anything can be um a characteristic in it any anything compared to like going up north for a fishing trip or going to damascotta lake we recommend you come up with a plan you come up with a plan first yep i'm gonna go up to moosehead this weekend i'm gonna go fishing make the plan check and double check the weather forecast you know how that is it's either hit or miss you know if you're gonna get the blizzard probably better not better not go or just plan for it make your plan and stick with it yes sometimes things change and this is like i said more toward up north where you could get in you could get stuck or get into some serious trouble how do how does a game warden know where to look for you if nobody knows you where you are so that's my point on the whole plan emphasis you know it's great if you've got another person with you some people go solo some people have a group but it gets more dangerous and serious when you're solo so the plan would really come into you know key um rescuing you if you get into a situation because now we've got a place to start moosehead's huge and even further than that mm -hmm. year after year we're always going on rescue missions because johnny didn't show up from his snowmobile trip we got to have a place last seen or a place to start and then when you come up with that plan tell somebody the plan that's not going so like i said if you are overdue that person can say huh boy they are so many hours late or they're a day late call us and then we can start even even if there's no problem some people run into issues from now and then that delay them some hours or whatever that happens that's life but year after year we do these searches to try to help people to make sure that they aren't stuck and nine times out of ten they, they do get stuck they go off the trail or whatever and then you want to make sure you you're prepared for your activity as best as you can make sure you get enough fuel with you more than enough fuel i always have a five gallon jug with me even down here i used to be up in the moosehead area and I, I learned you want to have five gallons of gas extra with you because you always get to the edge and you're like, yeah, I can go, I can go. And next thing you know, that five gallons might come in handy. But <laughs> make sure your batteries are charged. You know, if you if you got your phone and so on and so forth, everybody's got a phone, it seems like. Um, one thing I learned, you can take one of them hand warmers and put it in your pocket with your phone, and that will save the battery dramatically. And I don't throw off a lot of heat, it seems like, especially all this... This, the bulletproof vest and all that it kind of shields the heat from hitting my phone and it don't seem like much but that phone could be a lifesaver to a degree if you get an emergency i'm even putting it in a ziploc bag so it's you know good and waterproof but bring your extra batteries bring a light with you you got to have some kind of light source because if you do run into trouble and now it's dark it gets dark earlier these days you know you may you may expect to be home when the sun's still up but you may, you never know always have a light or two if you go to a spot that's got poor cell service you go up to chinsun cook or something like that they have uh, pretty good technology these these days uh the in right in reach device it's called and i'm not trying to promote anything but they could be life-saving tools uh the northern game wardens we have this this in reach device where you can send text messages out in poor cell phone areas or zero cell phone areas it, it works off satellite and so on and so forth and some of them have plans where you can pre-stage like five or ten messages and you pay so much a month um or you can get the unlimited but that's more pricey but how much is your life worth you know you can research those on the web it's called an in reach and they have these other things out there they're spot devices they're pretty yeah. common when people go on trips canoe trips and so on and so forth someone if they have an emergency they'll hit the sos on it and then it will send a signal out and then it'll get to dispatch and then it'll get to us those ones they they don't send messages to my knowledge um so it makes it difficult you know what's what's the emergency we don't know and we had a guy one time he hit one and he had cut his thumb bad but he weren't going to die and he hit that so we had no idea what the what the emergency was and we had a long way to go to get to him so anyway just just be uh familiar with that there are those devices out there satellite phones you know you could get one of those you want to make sure you have extra clothes uh even those buddy heaters they have so many different propane buddy heaters out hmm. there your truck breaks down or you run out of gas or whatever you got your buddy heater with you you can use that um or have some type of fire starter source with you i might be talking down to some people and and i might not to the others so i apologize if i talk down or 
to anyone or what. But uh, another good thing is uh, that I carry with me a plastic winter shovel and a metal shovel. If I get stuck, I got tools to get me out. Or if someone else gets stuck that I run across that may be on a back road or something, you know, those can really get you out of a pickle. Another thing would be uh, tire chains, toe straps, wenches, and make sure you have your spare tire because you can get flats in the winter, uh, the winter time. Here's a, a little fun fact, if you want to call it. A lot of people don't know. If you ever find yourself lost and you happen to have cell phone service, if you call 911 directly, it may not be the life or death emergency at the moment, but if you are truly lost, you can call 911 and the dispatch will have the coordinates to your location. Like I said, a lot of people didn't realize that. Don't call your buddy. Don't, you know, I mean, if your buddy can help you get out, great. But if you're truly lost, you call 911. And if you're in a safe spot, not underneath a Widowmaker or something like that, stay put once you call. Because we're going to be going to those coordinates. Okay? That's the other problem. People will move once they call, and now they're a quarter mile away. And we're like, huh, they're not here. All this stuff with a totality could save your life or save someone else's life. Actually going out on the ice, a lot of us know the ice conditions, they can change hour by hour in some spots or day by day. Gee, I was just out here, there was 10 inches and the snowmobile went through right over there, you know, 100 feet or 100 yards. Ice can vary, it's unpredictable to a degree. Well, like I said, I don't know everything about ice by any means and sometimes you learn the hard way but we, we want to try our best we can to not learn the hard way and learn from others and so on and so forth. When you want to go out on a body of water, bring it up on the internet and look at it, the satellite view. Know where your inlets are and your outlets because that's where the ice can vary in depth with the current or even just uh, springs in the water. That itself can erode the ice, springs and current and make it so you got a foot here and then two inches there. When you get snow on it, how much ice is under ice? There's no one can tell us unless they drill the hole right now, which everybody has, um, how much ice is under our feet. On our website and many other websites, there's a chart on there for uh, just a rough estimate on ice safety. The chart on our website is, is recommended for new ice, brand new ice that's clear. That's the strongest ice there is out there. As the ice ages and the different elements hit it, it's going to change its strength because there's many. You got the brand new ice, and then you got snow ice, and then you got the, like the end of the season or the thaw. That style of ice, it's all different strength. They recommend under four inches to stay off. There's a lot of people that don't listen to that, and they go out there on their hands and knees, their bellies, or walk right out there on two inches. And you got to know your abilities. And some of them people get wet, and uh, some of them have great luck catching fish. And, and it was well worth it to them. That's just the state standard under four inches. They recommend staying off. Four inches uh, may allow for ice fishing or other recreational activities on foot. And then five to seven inches often allows for snowmobiles and ATVs. 12 is a good ice support for most cars or small pickups. 12 to 15 will likely hold medium sized trucks. And like I said, that's when you drill a hole, you're like, oh yeah, there's three feet of ice. Well, how much of that's good ice? How much of that's ice? Snow ice and so on and so forth. You want to be mindful of that. Just because you drill your hole and it's straight full of ice doesn't mean it's a good support and ice for you. Also, when we start to, when we get snow on top of the ice, the snow acts as an insulator. So the ice will not uh, thicken up as quick because that snow insulates it. Also, like around different islands or obstructions, you take a large rock or a ledge the sun right now is going to be absorbed right into that and it's gonna it can do some melting even on a freezing cold day that sun can still penetrate you look at your roofs in the winter time it's going to be dripping it's the same thing out here any of those obstructions can gather that sunlight and warm up around it and you'll see at different times when you're traveling on the lakes you'll say oh that's a bad spot because it's all wet looking and, and it's dangerous looking. Another thing with ice is you'll find that there'll be pressure ridges on certain bodies of water. You got the inverted ones and I can't think of the other ones that puff up, but there's different pressure ridges out there. The ones that stick up, you know, you get a day like this, you can see them probably pretty good. But if you get a, a blizzard out there, or even just the wrong tone, like a cloudy day, that those can blend into a degree and 
you're going along fine on your snowmobile, and next thing you know, you run into a wall, and it's a pressure ridge. So it's fun. I mean, people love to rip it out here on the lake, but you got to be mindful of those. Just a simple snow drift or a pressure ridge could upset that thing just like that. And I've had some close calls before on... I try to be like the safest person out there when I'm riding. I don't care how safe you are. You can hit one boulder on a fresh, eight, uh, fresh uh, snowmobile trail and that can send you into the trees or fall, make you fall off. I'm getting down to the end of my list here. Yeah, it's a short one, but some safety, some safety equipment. We just had a guy go through on South Pond and I think he's trying to spread the word like crazy uh, locally. He uh, was out on an ATV and it was glare ice. There was no snow on the ice and he'd come along to a pressure ridge and that wasn't frozen. And he said, in his opinion, it was like 100 yards wide, this pressure ridge was. So he's going along on a four-wheeler with no picks or chains. And all of a sudden, he sees that last minute. And what do you do when you press the brakes with a four-wheeler with no picks or chains? You start to slide. And it's very hard to stop where you want to stop. And he went nosedive right into the pressure ridge. And this guy said he absolutely would not have made it out of that ice. Not that it was kept on breaking, but he just couldn't get up on it. And thankfully, some ice skaters were out there and happened to see him go through. They boogied to shore and got rope and a fish tote and carefully went out there and slung him the fish tote. And even, with, even with people there trying to rescue him, he's like, I can't do this, I'm gonna give up. He's like, and they had to keep telling him, don't give up, come on. And he was like a foot away from grabbing this fish tote. You're, psychologically, you're going through a lot. You're panicking if, if you don't know how to control your mind and your breathing. Something as simple as just getting up on the ice at times, you could fail because your mind is not in it. And anyway, he was able to grab the tote and they got him pulled out, but it was glare ice, so this guy was a big dude. When you're trying to get traction on glare ice, it makes it difficult. He had grabbed an ice creeper off his boot. He was able to reach down and use that a little bit to try to get some traction with his hands. But as soon as these, soon as these get cold enough, they're going to be numb, and you're not going to be able to have any dexterity with them. You can be in a real, real world of mess of trying to manipulate zippers and so on and so forth. But the quicker you can get your mind under control, the better off chance you're going to have to be able to save yourself. They, uh, they have ice picks out there, many different varieties. You can string them through your sleeves so they're right here, ready to go. I put mine in a pocket and I just hope I can get my mind so I can get my zipper down if I ever have to. Um, but these could be a lifesaver. Um, the warden service has started to implement uh, a yearly ice water um, training where they make us jump in a, a controlled environment, some body of water, they, they cut a hole in the ice and they make you jump in. And Generally, I, this is my snowmobile coat, but when I'm out on water, when you don't know how the ice quite is, I put the float coat on. And there's many different varieties of float coats out there. You look up any of the ice fishing equipment, they got all these different ones out there that don't even look like float coats. And something as simple as that could save your life or give you those extra, less energy trying to tread water. When I had to jump in the water, I had a snowmobile humming on, it was daylight, it was winter, but it was a fairly warm spring day. Um, it was raining. They made you jump in the water with your gear on. And I thought there was gonna be that immediate, like it just grabs your breath and like, oh, I'm gonna go under water and I'm gonna take that deep breath and I'm gonna inhale water because that can be a killer too. People have jumped in before and gone so deep and that water just shocks them and they, they can't help but their body makes them breathe and then they inhale water and then they, they never come to the surface. So I was like, oh, I hope this, you know, I hope this doesn't happen. But I jumped in and uh, I got out and I was barely even wet. It was unreal. My boots hadn't filled up or anything. It, it took so long for this water to penetrate your clothing. It was unreal. And I mean, I'm talking there was good ice to be able to get up on. It wasn't the ice that keeps breaking as you're trying to get up. Um, and then they had you jump back in and be in there for two, three minutes. And that's where they wanted you to try to get your breathing down to pat. You know, get your head together, take those deep breaths, hold them, and then release them. Get your mind on the ball. A lot of people think, rip that helmet off and sling it. Well, what we learned is helmet has flotation. 
when we've gone on some of these um, recovery missions, the helmet's floating. They have some kind of buoyancy with them, with the padding that they have in them. So you could always throw that under an arm or put it between your legs and it would provide just a little bit of buoyancy for you. It's not like just as soon as you go through, you're done unless you inhale that water and drown that way. You have time. The body is strong and it has time. The mind is what's going to fail you. And uh, so if you can have some, some uh, ice picks or some, that looks like a float type coat suit. So, um, look how look how nice that is. It's not big and puffy. You're not like the Michelin man. Um, something as simple like that. If you actually have an incident, it could save you. Um, it wouldn't hurt to have a throw bag with you. So, I mean, you may be safe as pie and the next thing you know, a wheel goes and boom, right? You can go out there and try to help rescue. Have that throw roll. Ice creepers for that glare ice, they'll keep you from breaking your neck, but they give you traction too. So just simple different tools like that can help you have a good experience and get you home at night whenever you're done recreating. I guess that's my two cents. I'm gonna run out of voice here. All right, guys, uh, let's thank Will for, for coming and, and talking about ice safety. Are you gonna be around? Yeah, I'll be around if anyone has any fishing questions or so on and so forth, but I'm one phone call away from an accident or who knows what, so if I disappear, who knows? If you're um, local, maybe get his number, but he's gonna be available for some one-on-ones, whether you're asking about game laws or safety or even if it's talking hunting laws or trapping laws he's going to be here for a little bit longer and please you utilize him and or thank him for his service here right for, on uh, our, for conservation right on our website too there's a search engine in there where you can type some questions and then someone from the department will get back to you there's that option or like i said call and dispatch hey i got a law question or whatever people have called before hey where's the moose at i got a moose permit you know <laughs> sometimes we help out if we can uh, but that's the fun of it going out there and exploring and finding the moose yourself or finding the fish yourself. But thank you for your attention, Thanks, everybody. guys. Thanks again. Have a good winter. Uh, burgers and dogs should be up pretty soon. I forgot a spatula, so Jesse ran back to get a spatula. But the burgers and dogs will be right here. Donnie's got some hot soup. chocolate and soup going. Hot chocolate and soup going over here. I'd love for everyone to sign in oh, sure. and get entered for the drawing. We're going to give away some jack traps and heritage traps. We got a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff we're giving away. And then I'd love for everybody to sign my tote sled here. I got a marker that's, uh, that's got like a paint marker. And I'd love for everybody to sign that too if, if they feel so inclined. And if we run out of room, we'll just flip it over and get it on the other side. That way you guys can come on a trip with me and you don't even have to be in the cold. <laughs>